Hi, I'm Rajiv. Welcome to Open Edgeware Learn and Teach. This is our first course on Open Edgeware, and this course deals with introduction to microcontroller programming. In this course, we'll be learning about microcontrollers in some detail, how to use it, how to program it, and so on. In this first video on this lecture series, I'll be telling you what a microcontroller is. This lecture will especially be beneficial for those who are new to the microcontroller world. After seeing this video, you'll be able to conceptualize about a microcontroller. You'll be able to have some idea about what a microcontroller is. But before we start, let me tell you often in this uh, video series, I'll be using uh, mu c for microcontroller. This mu being used for the word micro. Okay, so let's begin. A microcontroller is very similar to a computer. I'm sure you must have all seen and used a computer before. Let me draw a rough sketch of a computer here. Uh, this is your monitor, computer monitor. This is an old traditional desktop type computer. This is your keyboard. Not very good in drawing, so you have to use a bit of your imagination here. This is your CPU with some slots in them. And most computers now also have a mouse. Okay. Let me label these. So this is your CPU. This is your monitor. This is your keyboard and this is your mouse. Now what is the most important part of this whole setup? What is the most important part of a computer? The most important part of a computer is this CPU which is also called the brain of the computer. But why is it called the brain of the computer? Because it houses the most important part in a computer which is its processor. Okay. This processor performs all the arithmetic and logical functions in a computer. means all the calculations, all the algorithms that have, be, have to be performed are performed here in the processor. In addition, uh, your CPU also contains some other features, some other things like memory, memory in the form of RAM and ROM. I'm sure you're familiar with these terms before. Uh, and also has some other peripherals. Your CPU has also some other peripherals. So all this plays the most important part in a computer. That's why the CPU is called the brain of the computer. And to this CPU you can connect other input and output devices for example, keyboard is an input device. You can connect it to your CPU. So once you connect a keyboard to the CPU, uh, all the keyboard presses, all the key presses can be detected by your computer. You can connect other input devices like mouse. Mouse is an input device. Once you connect a mouse to your CPU, it can uh, detect left click, right click, scroll and so on. You can also connect output devices to your CPU like a monitor. Once you connect a monitor to your computer, you can display whatever you want on this monitor. Okay, so you can you can connect other output devices like printer to the CPU. You can connect other input devices like joysticks and so on. So these are your input device which you can connect, and this is your output device. Okay. Now a microcontroller is very similar to a computer. A microcontroller is basically a small IC chip, IC which is also called a chip. Okay, so this is your microcontroller chip or an IC. Okay, uh, the number of pins in this IC can vary from anywhere, starting from eight pins to eight pins to more than forty pins. Okay, and the microcontroller is very similar to a computer. It also has a processor inside it, which can perform arithmetic and logical functions. 
it also has some memory element inside it in the form of RAM and ROM very similar to what we saw in the computer it also has other peripherals inside it which we will be talking about later in our course of study other peripherals what is most important you can also connect input devices to your you can connect input devices to your microcontroller and you can also connect output devices to your microcontroller okay you can connect input devices like sensors uh, let's say a temperature sensor or a humidity sensor or a, a fire sensor, smoke sensor and so on. You connect output devices like motors, uh, LEDs and so on. Motors, LEDs and so on. Okay. So as you can see a microcontroller is very similar to what we saw in the computer before. So what's the difference between them? What's the difference? What's the difference between them? The difference is a computer, this computer can perform several functions inside it, inside them. For example, right now I'm using a computer and I'm using this MyPaint software for sketching this, this, uh, this, this lecture. At the same time, I have in my computer, I have a VLC stream running going on which is recording my desktop. And at the same time, I have an Audacity software running, which is uh, recording my voice. So all these different functions. You see, this 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 regard this is related to video processing. This is related to sound processing. This is related to uh, this this software is related for graphics. All these are different works that can be done in a computer. In addition to this, you can uh, do several things in the computer. You can you can draw. Uh, you can use a browser uh, you see there is time getting displayed here uh, in a computer so all these are happening at the same time on the other hand in a microcontroller microcontrollers uh, everything is very limited in size very limited in capability the processor is limited in capability the processor is limited in capability uh, the memory is limited in capability and other peripherals are also limited in their sizes and capability so a microcontroller can perform very small and dedicated tasks small dedicated tasks what do you mean by small and dedicated tasks that means it may it means it can only perform one type of task one type of function all the time okay uh, i like to give an example where a microcontroller is used uh, I'll just give an example. Uh, you must have seen, you must have seen a digital watch. Uh, I'm just drawing a rough sketch of a digital watch, which displays your time in digits. Those kind of watches run using a microcontroller, and the microcontroller has got only one task, just to keep record of the time. That's all. It doesn't need to do video processing. It doesn't need to do audio processing. So only one type of task is run by this microcontroller. And these kind of places are where microcontrollers are used to perform only one small dedicated tasks because they because the size of their processor, because the size of their memory, because the size of their other peripherals are limited. Similarly, microcontrollers are nowadays used in almost all types of devices, your refrigerators, your uh, your freeze, fridges, uh, uh, almost anything that you can think of, remote controls, all all of these things run a microcontroller. I hope uh, you can abstractly conceptualize our microcontroller now. That was the purpose of this video. And in the next video, in the next video, we'll be continuing uh, to with this lecture series. And our next video will concentrate on to take a peek inside a microcontroller to see what is inside the microcontroller how how does it work okay so this lecture series will be continued again thank you thank you for your time